In this video, I'm going to show you how to use original shadows to make realistic compositing in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial you will learn how you can use the shadows from your original subject image to achieve a realistic composite. You're also gonna learn how to match the horizon lines of your images, how to scale your subject in perspective and lastly we're gonna finish the composite by matching the subject and the luminosity of our subject with the background. So I have my subject and my background in one document and I want to add a shadow to my subject and match it with the background. So you can see I already removed the background and created a layer mask. This is the original image and I just took the girl and her mother and extracted them from the background. So at the moment a lot of things are not matching between the subject and the background and you can see that the light source of the background image is coming from the left but on the subject it is the opposite. So that means we need to flip one of them. I want to flip the background image, so I'm going to select the layer, click on Ctrl T to get to the free transform, and then right click and choose flip horizontal. Now the lighting is matching and it looks much better. The next thing we need to match is the perspective and the scaling because the subject is looking very big at the moment. And to properly scale the subject in perspective, we need to find the horizon line first. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm just going to make a copy of the subject layer. We're going to use this as a shadow. And just by looking at the background, we can tell that the horizon line is here, just between the trees and the mountain in the background. So I'm going to bring the rulers up and drag a guide here to mark it as the horizon line. We can also get an accurate representation by looking at the vanishing point, which is the point where the road ends and the horizon line is actually a little bit to the bottom. Now that we know where the horizon line is, we can scale our subject based on it. So if we bring the free transform, we can move this point and align it with the vanishing point. And actually I need to move the subject a little bit to the right. Then I can click on Ctrl T again and move the point to match it with the vanishing point. And now if we scale the image and also hold ALT while doing that, you can see that we are scaling the image based on that vanishing point. We can make the subject very big or very small and the perspective will always stay right. I'm going to cancel that because we need to find the horizon line of the subject image first and match it with the background. So we can turn off the layer mask temporarily by holding SHIFT. And for this image, the horizon line is a little bit higher and I'm going to use the move tool to drag it a little bit down and match the horizon lines together. Now we can turn the layer mask back on and you can see just by doing that, the scale is looking much better now. Okay, now I can hit Ctrl T and I'm going to again align the point to the horizon line and scale my subject using Alt. And I'm gonna scale it down to about this size. Now we can hide the roller and the guides and the next thing we need to do is add the shadow. So I'll turn the shadow layer back on and we need to disable the layer mask. So I'm going to fill the mask with white. I will be using the shadow of the original image and I'm gonna show you how to select it. But first we need to align the two images together. So what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity of the layer so I can see the background and I'm going to scale both of them a little bit just to align that bottom shadow part with the canvas. Okay, I'm gonna turn the opacity back on and I'm gonna also delete this layer mask. So we're going to be using color range to select the shadow. So you need to go to select, color range. And from here, you can click on the shadow to select it. And by the way, if you're not seeing this black and white view, 
You can do that by changing the preview mode to grayscale. You have the fuzziness slider and you can use that to narrow the range of the selection. And you can also hold shift and click to add more areas to the selection. We can also exclude parts of the selection from the image by holding Alt. And I'm gonna increase the fuzziness a little bit to keep the edges of the shadows soft. Click OK to accept the changes. And now we have a selection and what we need to do is create a layer mask. So we are only gonna need this part of the shadow and we need to hide the rest. So you can take the lasso tool, then make a selection around this area. And we can hide this area by filling it with black. So black is my foreground color. And I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut, Alt Backspace. I'm gonna Alt click on the layer mask to see if there's any areas we need to mask. And it looks like we do. And for these areas, we can take the brush tool and paint with black to hide it. When we get closer to the shadow we need, we can change the blending mode of the brush to overlay, reduce the flow a little bit, and now we can clean the edges without worrying about the shadow being removed. It's okay if you leave this part of the shadow because it's not gonna be visible and it's going to be underneath our subject. All right, so now we have the shadow masked out. And at the moment, the color is not matching with the background, but we can change the blending mode to overlay. And now as you can see, it's blending much better with the background. Now the color is still not quite matching and we can look at the shadow of the trees as a reference. So now we can just create a color balance adjustment layer and then clip it to the subject using Alt. And we just need to add more blue and cyan. All right, so let's match the color of the subject now with the background. And I'm going to create another color balance adjustment layer on top of my subject layer. Create a clippy mask. And then I'm going to add more yellow, green, and red to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So that's before and after. Okay, so if I zoom in, the shadow is looking okay and it's matching with the background. But if you take a look at the subject, you will see that it's very sharp, but the background has a little bit of blur. So we need to compensate for that by blurring the subject a little bit. So I'm going to select the subject layer. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to add a very small amount, one pixel or even less. So I'm going to go with 0.4 pixels. That works for me. And I'm going to click OK. So what I would like to do next is enhance the highlights a little bit on the subject. So I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer on top. I'm going to check colorize and I'm going to change the hue to match the color of the background and also increase the saturation and the brightness. So that's going to be the highlight color and we don't want it to be visible everywhere. So I'm just going to invert the layer mask by clicking on control or command I. Then I'm just going to take the brush tool, change the foreground color to white. And I'm going to paint at the edges with a small brush size to create a sort of light reflection or glow at the right side of her. Alright, we can also paint on this side of her leg too. There's also some highlights there. 
And I'm gonna also paint some light on the right hand side of the girl as well. You can also reduce the opacity if you need to. And I'm gonna also change the color of the highlight to orange. So I'm gonna add another highlight to the image and I'm gonna add a solid color this time. I'm gonna choose an orange color again and I'm actually going to sample the same color of the background. And then I'm gonna change the blending mode of this layer to either screen or soft light. I'm gonna go with the screen and reduce the opacity if I need to. So again, we're gonna fill the layer mask with black and use the brush tool to paint the light. So this time I'm gonna reduce the flow, then I'm gonna take a big soft brush and paint some soft light from where the light is coming. The light is a little bit strong, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity a little bit. Okay, now we need to match the luminosity of the subject because as you can see, the light is coming from the top right and they should be a little bit darker. So I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer on top and make sure to clip it to the subject. So to make sure this adjustment layer won't affect color, I'm gonna change the blending mode to luminosity. Then I'm just gonna darken the midtones a little bit. So that's before and after, and it's looking way better. Okay, I'm gonna add one last levels adjustment layer, and this time I'm gonna use this layer to paint some shadows. I'm gonna darken the midtones and the highlights. I'll change the blending mode of this layer to luminosity as well. And I'm gonna fill the layer mask with black. So you're gonna take the brush tool and paint with white to reveal this adjustment layer on the left hand side of the subject and paint some shadows. Alright, so that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know what you think in the comments below. What's your favorite technique you learned today? And lastly, if you want to take your Photoshop compositing skills to the next level and support the channel, you can check out my courses at retouchstudio.com where I go in-depth teaching advanced Photoshop compositing techniques by creating practical real-world projects. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.